Hello, I'm ABX Toy Cat, and Mojang have stated that parity between the two Minecrafts is one of their main priorities right now, which is odd because whether you live or die when you jump with a horse off a cliff or decide to go for a swim in the ocean or spend three days without sleeping is entirely dependent on which version of Minecraft you're playing. This is odd because these are parity differences which will literally end your life on bedrock, yet despite that aren't being put in priority over features which people actually do quite like. Mojang did fix the windswept savannah grass and and they did fix the cobweb crafting recipe, and even the fact that you could put horses in boats features people quite like, before fixing ones which will actively end people's lives every single day. This is something that is kind of a weird decision on its own right, but also a big PSA is in order to let you know, as the average Minecraft viewer, which things you definitely should or shouldn't do, depending on which version of Minecraft you're playing, because there are things which will literally end your life. In fact, there's 15 of them we'll be going through today. I hope you do all enjoy this video. Consider subscribing to the channel or hitting the bell if you do, because let's Going to the first one, boats will not save you from falls like they do on Java. When you're on Java, you can get in a boat and you take no fall damage, but if we tried the exact same thing over here with a really nice sick jump, you can see I took seven and a half hearts of fall damage, and that's from a fairly realistic fall. If you were to try and go into a mine, a technique I see lots of Java players do, you would literally end up dead on bedrock, which is a really big deal. Speaking of really big deal, did you know on bedrock only, boats can pick up a hostile mob while the player is inside? To prove this, I'll get a uh, husk right over here, and then we'll get ourselves into this boat, and I'm just gonna back the boat up with me, and you're gonna see something weird, the husk gets in the boat with me. That is quite a strange feature by itself, but what makes it worse is this third change, because mobs in a boat get a range buff while they're inside of them. To account for the fact that they can't move because they're in a boat, they get a buff to the amount of range they have. This is so ridiculous to me, but it means that if you want to take down a mob in a boat, you have to watch out, because from insane distances, they can attack you. There is no way this can be seen as anything but a serious bug or parity concern, either Java is missing a really cool feature. I love this one so much, it's really great when you get this close to a zombie, and despite it making no logical sense whatsoever, you get hurt. That's something either Java players should have, or more realistically, to take away my sarcasm, uh, it should have been solved on bedrock long before they worked out whether, hostile, you know, whether horses should fit in boats, because that's something players can enjoy, whereas this is something players can only have their life ruined by. Speaking of having their lives ruined, something you should notice to do with uh, boats is the fact that Enderman can teleport in and, uh, sorry, can teleport out of boats, I guess also into boats, um, which is something which doesn't happen on the Java version. So if I get this Enderman in a boat, which I can do while I'm inside of it, you'll see how he immediately gets right out. This is something that will happen whether or not the player uh, does some things to stop it, and it's a really, really interesting one because it means that the whole strategy of taking down Enderman changes. If you put an Enderman in a boat and you think you're so smart to attack him, then let me tell you you're in for a surprise because wow, he's gone and if he was mad with you, he might just end your life. Speaking of ending your life, uh, this is one I particularly deal with because I spend a lot of time underwater on the Bedrock version. A lot of people will tell you, if they're Java players, just put a door underwater and you don't have to worry about breathing. This means that um, one of my most popular uh, shorts, which is like how to breathe underwater, Java players non-stop comment on saying, just put bubble, put, put, put a door down and you'll be able to breathe, you idiot. But here's the thing, it doesn't work that way on Bedrock. Uh, I think correctly speaking, because of waterlogging, if you place any waterloggable block in water, it will start waterlogged on bedrock. The only way to stop that is I guess you could come in here with enough door, with enough buckets, and try to remove it from there if you really wanted to, but even here it's going to get the water sources from everywhere around it, meaning there is no way to actually breathe from these doors, and instead you'll die if you try. And the worst bit is, you'll realize this while raiding an ocean monument or something, where it'll be far too late to do anything about it. Speaking of far too late, did you know standing in fire, even briefly, still gives you the full burn time of about 8 different ticks? It's really, really disastrous. Look at that. I stepped in it very briefly, yet I'm still going to take a full four hearts of damage. Uh, it might be a little bit more than four hearts. From, yeah, four, four hearts of damage. Way too much, right? Which, by the way, is made way worse by the seventh big problem, because I do think that there are some realistic compromises you can draw between Bedrock and Java, but one of those that I think is crazy they haven't even considered trying is the highly outdated regen mechanics. Bedrock has a healing system, which was added to Minecraft Java in 2000. 2011, it was removed from Java in 2015, um, but instead for Bedrock, here it stays regardless. So I, I starved to death, apparently. So here I am now at, no, at half a heart, and uh, as you can see, I'm going to lose my hunger real quick. Let me show you the regen time that it's going to take to get back up. Every four seconds, you heal half a heart, which means to heal nine hearts. That's 18 times four seconds. Oh dear God, it's a minute and 16 seconds, plus the four for the extra half a heart. One minute and 20 seconds. For comparison, here is
there is healing on the Java edition, using the same golden carrots, you will notice it is drastically different. And importantly, this means that all sorts of challenges are much easier on Java, for reasons we'll get into later, but also for healing related ones. Speaking of healing related ones, did you know uh, something really cool? This is actually a bedrock buff, I would argue, only if you know about it. If you don't know about it, it will end your life. If you're flying with an Elytra on bedrock, you can tap A in midair to cancel the flight. This is pretty cool, although will result in a lot of full damage if you do it wrong. Uh, this is a really cool way to land somewhere in particular without having to do this. You ever found yourself doing, ouch, <laughs> let me heal up using my very fast bedrock healing. You ever found yourself trying to circle around something uh, when instead what you could do with the, uh, the, the mechanics like this is you can just let go as soon as you're on top of it and not have to wait till you hit the ground. This one, this makes way more sense than honestly should be on Java, but Java players will come to bedrock not realizing they can do it and maybe letting go in midair and oh dear god, uh, and bedrock players will come to Java trying to land somewhere in particular, do this, and then it doesn't work and you're stuck in midair. It's really, really terrible. Speaking of really, really terrible, by the way, did you know if you rely on subtitles on Java, a key accessibility feature, Bedrock doesn't have it. If you want proof of this, I'll go to the accessibility menu. Obviously, the, the menu looks way different. I'm sure a lot of people know about this by now. Um, but here are the settings. We've got text-to-speech. We've got open chat messages. We've got text background opacity, camera shake, darkness effect strength, glint strength, glint speed. We've got so many settings, even telling you how long market place offers are visible by uh, default. When the game advertises at you, you can pick whether you want it for three seconds or whether you want that to be there for longer. So Minecraft has put the effort into adding accessibility if you don't have enough time to read their marketplace messages, but no accessibility if you can't hear noises in the game. I think this is a really weird one, and I'm going to level with you. I do think that mine I I'm not going to say Mojang are lazy in this way. I bet Mojang would add it to Bedrock if they could as easily as they can in Java, but for whatever reason, it just isn't possible in as easy a way. But still, it's been years since since this was added to Java, and no sign, no roadmap, no date for it coming to Bedrock, that to me is the lazy bit. It's obviously harder to add. I think some people just say, oh, Mojang, you could code subtitles in two minutes. Look, I'll make the subtitles now. Toy Cat eats golden carrot. Oh yeah, look at that. I've added subtitles. Why can't Mojang do that? But obviously it's much harder to code, especially in a different engine. But after years, at some point you're just saying it's not a priority. Just like how, by the way, Pillar Drought Post, this isn't a priority one, but it's weird. Did you know these are the biomes they generate in on Bedrock and these are the biomes they generate in on Java? After the most recent update, there's that Cherry Grove edition too, which is Java exclusive now. But knowing which biomes you can find a Pillar Drought Post in varies based on which Minecraft you play. And what's weird about this is uh, obviously most Minecraft parity changes are because the Java and Bedrock version used to follow different paths way back, but 1.14 was the first update which came out for both platforms, and so why was that so different? I don't understand. Speaking of things that are different I don't understand, here's the Totem of Dying, and something you might not know is you get a solid 45 seconds of regeneration too when you play the Java edition. Play Bedrock on the other hand and you get 40 seconds. It's not a big difference, but it is a weird one. Did you also know that uh, Totem of Dying on Bedrock used to give you fire resistance? Too. It was the only place in the whole game you could get that effect, and obviously fire resistance is an on-off effect, so it did nothing. But I just, it's one of those fun trivia pieces that I, I want to bring to this right now to say, yeah, I think Mojang could do a lot of things, uh, and I think they are doing a lot of things. Like, this is one they are soon to be fixing, because right now, Minecraft has a pause menu, but you want to know something fun? It doesn't pause the game. So if you pause, you can see in the background all these sparkles are still going off, which is your first clue, but if you're not near any of these effects, you might pause the game when Minecraft tells you to, and then go and, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna go uh, cook some pasta, and while you're gone, you'll be murdered by a zombie. This is, and, uh, oh, here's the worst bit about this, by the way. When you're murdered by the zombie, you'll die, and your stuff will be there, and because you haven't hit the respawn button, all your stuff will despawn. It is so tragic. The first time this happens to you, you rage at the game, and you say, I'm never playing Minecraft again. This isn't personal experience. I didn't get murdered by a phantom. I swear this didn't happen in my Let's Play world, where I then realized there was no saving, uh, exit without saving function. There is save and quit, but there is no such thing as unsaved Minecraft. If you don't save and quit, you'll come right back to the same game anyway. Minecraft has no pause menu. It has no save function. The game is always going, and if you don't like that, well, then you're already dead, so it sucks. The only way uh, to circumvent that is make regular backups, I guess, if a, a save file gets corrupted or lost or broken in some way, uh, but this is a big deal of a difference, and uh, is arguably one of the reasons we don't have hardcore on Bedrock, which is a thing that might kill you, I guess. I I guess it's the opposite of would kill you. You can't die permanently on Bedrock, which I guess is nice. By the way, speaking of nice things, let me show you my favorite mob. I really love these guys. I, I was so excited to vote for them back in uh, 
you know, back all the way back in 2016. And let me show you something fun about them. They do significantly more damage on all difficulties. So, um, obviously we're playing hard right now, but if we switch to easy, the difficulty where you'd expect phantoms not to hurt me too much, right? Let me show you something fun about phantoms. Despite me playing on easy and having armor, look how much damage they do. Just a few phantoms spawning in a row and you're destroyed. And oh, it's fine. I'll just heal up, use my golden carrots. No, one more wave of them and you're dead. I have been playing easy with full armor and just being spawned and not knowing what to do because I'm rushing somewhere. I have died to the phantoms. Is that my fault? Yes, it is. Is that something that's happened to lots of people despite the fact that it shouldn't because they do too much damage on bedrock compared to their, you know, pre presumably more correct Java implementation? Yes, it does. If you play Java, you don't need to care about phantoms. They're a laughable mob. If you play bedrock, you would need to care about phantoms more than you care about calling your own mother. And uh, speaking of calling your own mother, uh, the drowns on bedrock are much more likely to carry a trident. So when you're sending her a text next time saying, sorry, I haven't messaged you in so long. It's really important that I say that I love you. Uh, right in the middle of that, make sure you let her know that if you go up against the drowned, he is more likely to have a trident. This has two main effects. One of them is good. It means you can get tridents way easier on bedrock because of their higher spawn rate. But the second reason is that trident wielding drowns deal so much damage that if you're playing any difficulty and don't have armor, two hits from a trident wielding drowned, you are dead. And if there's more of them in the sea, you're dead more often. Go for a little swim and you're dead. See how the intro ties it all in together now. Isn't that beautiful? Speaking of beautiful, here's a fun few extras. Pillager patrols can spawn in any light level versus just eight and below. Vexes won't despawn when a raid ends on bedrock. That one is very, very, very scary. Also, if you're used to Java combat, bedrock may feel unfamiliar. There is no, okay, so the, the kind of uh, counterbalance to the lack of fast regeneration is that there is no slower down combat. However, this also means that a sword is still the best weapon on the bedrock version. And so uh, you, you might want to keep that in mind. And also it means that you can spam hit as much as you like. And that's actually a fairly effective tactic. However, something you might not be prepared for if we can go back to, uh, you, if we just go back a little bit, is the fact that when you're using the sword as a weapon like this, it will deal damage even when you're not hitting something. So if you look at my durability on this sword or what's, yeah, I guess the sword's the best example here. Um, let me let me just quickly throw on my leather tunic. It looks very good, right? In fact, let's dye the leather tunic pink. Oh, is there is there gonna be some uh, difference in trying to dye it pink? I imagine there might just be, oh, does this not work this way on bedrock? That might get you killed if you don't like having bad fashion. But here's me now attacking a zombie. And as you can see, I'm spam hitting. It's using more dur- it's, it's hard to tell with that. I think a gold sword uh, is maybe the best example. Um, but if we quickly use a gold sword to do the exact same thing, or a gold ax for a better example, this is a gold ax that can use up this much durability normally, and it uses twice as much when attacking a zombie. So I can do that many attacks to a zombie, but if I spam hit, every one of those attacks that is going in the cooldown phase also does a lot of damage to your tools, which means just watch out for this. Hey, there he is. That was way too long. So here we go. You can see that I'm <laughs> killing a zombie, but using an entire golden axe to do so. And you can see how it went down slowly. It wasn't that they each used up eight durability. It was that they just all happened to use durability on those spam hits in between. By the way, I'm just doing this to avoid fighting the Whipper. One of the worst differences that you will get murdered by if you don't know about is this one right here. So um, let me just throw some things on the ground so I can pick up a lovely helmet, a lovely chest plate, and indeed a lovely bow or power and infinity. I hear infinity is the best enchantment. What do you think, guys? I, I've heard that's a thing, but uh, <laughs> more seriously, here's something fun about the Wither on Bedrock. I'll read it to you while we spawn him in. So first things first, the Wither is something else altogether on Bedrock. Look at how fast he's moving around while he's uh, spawning. He explodes when spawned. That's a big deal. Look at this, by the way. Um, he, he spawns Wither skeletons at half health. Also, um, a dash attacks after half health and breaks every block it touches. Also, here's the crazier thing. You can attack a Wither with a bow only for the first half of his health. So look at me. The Wither seems so easy on Bedrock. I'm jarvering up the Wither right now. I'm doing my thing. I'm taking him down. Wow, look how weak the Wither is. I can't believe Bedrock players think this is hard, but let me show you something wild that happens at half regeneration. When the Wither was added to uh, Java, he was already the hardest mob in the game, but when they added him to Bedrock, it seems as though they decided to actually make him a hardcore, harder than the Ender Dragon boss. And so let me show you something fun. He gets this fun blue shield, does a second big explosion, and out of the explosion, oh, Oh no, he's gonna dash me. Out of the explosion comes this fun thing. Uh, the fact that you now can't attack him with arrows, they bounce off them. These explosions deal a lot more to you, and uh, more importantly than any of that, 
is the fact that all of this is just too terrible. Should we go back to hard, by the way, because here's something fun. Uh, the Wither varies much more based on difficulty here. As you can see, each of these attacks are now going to deal the Withering effect to me, which means that I'm literally getting Withered faster than I can heal myself up. You will never win against the Wither if you play on hard difficulty without every preparation in the game. And uh, yeah, you can try your best, but you won't succeed. I can promise you that much right now. Even with infinite respawns, you're going to have a real rough time convincing me this is a good idea because he has everything in the book to use against you. And what are you going to do about that? The answer is, of course, die. What is that wither dash? That is crazy. So yeah, those are some things that might get you killed while playing Minecraft Bedrock. Parity differences you need to know about because your life literally depends on it. Is he going to blow up all of our stuff here? Your, your life literally depends on knowing about these parity differences. And honestly, it's a reminder uh, to anyone who works on anything at Mo you know, in, in Mojang who's like, how do we make the games more equal? These are the things you address first. Every day, someone is losing something they care about, whether it's just belonging, or maybe an entire world if they're playing hardcore because of key differences like this that should be addressed first. Work out a consistent way for pausing. Uh, that is something they're doing, to be fair. They're calling it the menu uh, button soon. But work out a consistent way that you want the wither or phantoms or regeneration to work. <laughs> oh man, he's getting closer and closer to me. Okay, let's just finish. Let's see if we can finish him. He's so close now. There we go. By the way, there's one last explosion when you kill him. Always important to know that's there because if you get too close, even, even from here with all this armor, Here's something fun about it, right? You might think that everything's fine, but it's not fine. Speaking of not, oh, you get a wait. This is something I didn't realize. When when the when the wither kills you, you get a wither rose too. That's a handy fact to know about. Speaking of handy facts to know about, did you know if you subscribe to the channel, you can learn more such weird Minecraft facts? And uh, yeah, on this channel, I think it's very important we talk about parity because Minecraft goes back and forth between pretending there is only one Minecraft and pretending that actually, no, there's two distinct Minecrafts and they're totally different and can do different things. Pick a side, Mojang. Are you going to make Minecraft the same everywhere? Or do you just want to admit that having two different Minecrafts actually works quite well? By the way, a bonus one from Adorable Ho, uh, my, the person who made this world today, he is very outspoken about bedrock sunsets, and so as proof, here is them literally murdering you just for looking at them. So yeah, this is... <laughs> I, I quite like it personally. I like that the sun gets bigger when you look at it, but is that realistic? You tell me. For now though, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you did, subscribe if you really didn't, and I guess I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.